I missed you guys on Monday. We were kind of busy here. Monday and Tuesday, we had people here that took a lot of our attention away from, from first for a little bit because we are updating our website. Over the next six, eight months, we're gonna be updating our website. You'll, you'll have a whole new website experience with Andy Mark coming later this summer. And we had our, our launch of the new process of developing the website um, was started by a visit from the company that we're working with. We've chosen to work with Work Area, and they're gonna make a new website for us. And we're really excited about it, but they were here on Monday. And I thought it'd be kind of weird to have them here during a lunch with Andy, and uh, yeah, it just didn't work out. Well, it's uh, Wednesday, the 14th of February. We've got less than a week to go for FRC build season. We had pizza today for lunch. We had Domino's pizza, which is not my favorite pizza in town. <laughs> <laughs> They're actually right across the street from us, so we get Domino's a lot. Maybe that's probably why, is I, I get this. We get pizza a lot from Domino's. I'm thankful on this day of Valentine's and Ash Wednesday that uh, we do have green compliant wheels. They are at our molder here in town and they are being molded today. We will open up orders today. So by the time you see this video, they're probably already on, in stock on our website. So check out the green low durometer TPU molded wheels. We also have two by one 6061 extrusions. We, we finally have more of those in stock. Well, we've got a bunch, so stock up for your, I mean, for your robot this summer, for next year's robot, you might want to buy a bunch of this stuff because this seems to be a, a hard thing to buy. This is thin wall, 1 16th inch wall, 6061 extrusion. So there's been a lot of hubbub in the community about um, update 11. So update 11, check it out because there's a clarification in update 11 that they're allowing bolt head protrusions and fastener protrusions to be within a quarter inch of the frame perimeter to not be counted as part of the frame perimeter. It was kind of confusing. There was, there's two robot rules, R02 and R03, and there was a bit of conflicting information on there. First came out and gave us an update just recently that, that said um, they're more accepting of the bolt heads than some teams thought. There's some folks who are frustrated about this because they've complied with this rule very well. And there's some folks that are happy because they don't have to work as hard to get all those bolt heads and screws and nuts back within that theoretical perimeter. And also at the events, we're not gonna see as many issues with regard to the bolt heads sticking out of the team perimeters that of people that um, didn't realize it was gonna be this stringent. In my opinion, I think it's a good call. I totally understand how teams are frustrated about this, how they've complied. That's tough on those teams, I get it. This, we're gonna be better off because we're not gonna have really uninspirational happenings at district and regional events. So there is also a, an update of regarding copper versus aluminum wire. So check out the update and make sure you're using the right type of wire. A couple other things happening in the community. I did see a, a, a wonderful, well, we, we kind of saw a three cube auto from Citrus Circuits, 1678. So good job, Citrus Circuits, with your mostly shielded three cube auto. I, I trust that the three cube auto happened, but I saw the Falcon Heavy graphic moving around the playing field and they were exa excited that it happened. I believe that it happened, but they shielded us, they shielded us from their entire robot. Also, I saw a, a really fast elevator for 1501. So Team Thrust up in nearby us, up in Huntington, Indiana, they have a really quick raising of a cube um, with their robot and it's it's a, like zero to nine feet in under a second. So I think that's gonna be a, a, something that's gonna, we're gonna see a lot of this really fast dynamic lifting of cubes because I mean, I think this, this year's game is about speed and execution. And so um, getting that cube up and placed on the scale will be a, a really advantageous thing that 1501 has already pointed out. One thing I wanna talk about is, is weight. Wait, wait, don't tell me, or wait, wait, there's more. Anyway, weight is a big issue on these robots. This is the first year in a while we've had these big robots and these long, tall robots that extend up and out. And um, that takes a lot of weight to do some of those things. And you have these long bearing systems and such. So there's a couple things that, that uh, you know, we've done to try to lose some weight on our team. I think we were, we were overweight a couple nights ago when we got our practice robot done. And so we've looked at 
you know, changing out from a 775 motor to a 9015 motor or a 550 series motor, that saved us some weight. Um, there's some thoughts about changing from a Talon to a Victor in some cases to save some weight. One of the things that we're doing for pneumatics, we actually went out and bought a, so this is something that Andy Mark doesn't sell, but we went out and bought a, a $200 Thomas pump that is gonna save us about a pound. So this pump, we're gonna try it out, see how it works on our robot. Maybe it's a future Andy Mark product, I don't know, but um, this will save us about a pound and we're spending some money to save some weight. When you look for these pumps, if you look for a smaller pump, be careful. Not only are you looking for a 12 volt DC pump, but you also are working for looking for a pump that's uh, 120 PSI. They have to be rated for uh, that pressure or higher. There's a lot of pumps out there that are like 30 PSI or 20 PSI that are really small pumps, but they're not gonna be legal because they're not 120 PSI or higher. Um, another thing that, that you might want to do, and this this again is not an Andy Mark product. Shout out to my our friends at Automation Direct. They have really nice little um, gauges and regulators that will save you some weight here. So a lot of people should use their vouchers, their Automation Direct voucher, to, to buy maybe some of these things. Really simple, um, small gauges and, and regulators. This is not a weight thing. Me and a student were working on pneumatics last night. But the thing I wanted to show you was really the thing I recommend for reliability of wiring is um, using these ferrules. This is a this is a ferrule on the end of a wire that you crimp in place and you put it into these kind of hard to hard to reach or hard to engage holes on some of these boards. The packaging is nice and small and, and easily used if you have the right ferrules. But if you don't have ferrules on here and you have just strands of wire and you try to shove it in, into that hole, it gets kind of difficult. So I would recommend you use some sort of ferrule, crimp it on there, shove it into the hole, and it's going to save you a lot of headaches. Keep working on your robot. You have a couple more days to go. It's, it's the final push. You're going to get it done. Be safe, have fun, and we'll see you on Friday. So happy Thanksgiving. Got a couple of things to talk about. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> happy Valentine's Day. Oh, it, it's always, it's all a joke. <laughs> happy Valentine's Day. Uh, uh.